Hello students, welcome to Legacy AIS Academy. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the recent incidents of the MiG-21 fighter jet that has crashed in the Rajasthan region. So we are going to discuss in this video in detail that why, despite having uh, so much accidents that is involving MiG-21 fighters, the Indian Air Force is still flying this particular aircraft and what are the other types of military jet or military aircraft that Indian Air Force has in its squad. But first, to give you a brief context of the particular news, MiG-21 fighter jet of the Indian Air Force has crashed near the Rajasthan's Suratgarh district while it was on its routine operational training sortie. Sortie is basically referred to the mission or uh, that mission that is basically uh, flown by the Indian Air Forces or any Air Forces for such matter. So while the pilot sustained minor injuries after the ejection, the aircraft wreckage basically failed on a house in this district and thus killing three civilians on the spot. The exact cause of the accident, what actually has caused this incident is still not known. It will be uh, basically inspected by the court of inquiry, which has been ordered by the, or uh, which has been ordered after the particular incident. Now, let us try to understand about this MiG-21 fighter jet aircraft. So MiG-21s are among the total seven fighter jets, total different, seven different type of fighter jets are there that Indian Air Force uses mainly for, uh, mainly as its, attack arsenal and thus it is presently flown by the Indian Air Force. For a long period of time, we talk about MiG-21, it has been the backbone of Indian Air Force because of its sheer number that it has in this squadron. Basically, the MiG-21s are a type of single engine, single seater, multi-role fighter or ground attack aircraft. If we talk about the history of MiG-21s in Indian Air Forces, it was first inducted in year 1963 from the Soviet Union as an interceptor aircraft. Now, what is interceptor aircraft? We are going to discuss about this in a while. So, it was basically inducted from Soviet Union in 1963 as an interceptor aircraft. However, in the next few decades, they were upgraded to perform a variety of role that is uh, basically whether it is the role of having a fighter aircraft or including even ground attacks. So, let us first try to understand the terminologies that is used for different types of military aircraft. So, first of all, we have are the fighters, the fighter aircrafts. The fighter aircraft are basically used for destroying enemy aircrafts in air-to-air -air combat as part of both offensive as well as defensive counter air operations. We can understand this in terms, suppose that we have uh, we have a war with any nation. Suppose that we have a war that has happened in Kargil during 1989 with Pakistan. So, in the, during that time, in the Pakistani Air Force try to enter into the Indian territory or in a try to uh, basically attack the Indian territory. That time, the fighter aircraft has a role to also fly and then attack these enemy aircraft. So, such aircrafts are called as fighter aircraft. The best example of this, which India also uses, is Sukhoi 27th variant, also called as Su-27 Su uh, aircraft that is also uh, basically been produced by the Russia. The second variant of aircraft or type of aircraft or what we refer as bombers generally. So as clear from the name itself, bombers generally have a much more larger, heavier and are less maneuverable than the fighter aircrafts. The reason is obviously clear because fighter aircraft have to actually attack the air, uh, attack the enemy aircraft and they'll have to again return back to base and thus they require high degree of maneuverability, which is not required for bombers because they are basically used for carrying large payloads of the bombs, torpedoes or even cruise missile. And then they are given a particular target and then they go and then basically attack those targets by launching these missiles and bombs. So they are used almost exclusively for the ground attacks. Ground attacks means that when the bombers fly out, they have been given a target that this particular area is there where maybe it's enemy's concentration uh, of the troops or enemy's concentration of the ammunition or something like that. And then the V2 aircrafts or the Bombay aircraft in that matter uh, go there, fly there and the attack the enemy's position. So they are not fast or agile enough to take an enemy fighters head to head. So they are not basically suitable to air to air combat as the fighters are suitable for. The best example of bombers are B2 bomber, which is produced by the United States of America. Coincidentally, we talk about the position of India in this regard. India do not have or does not have any kind of bomber aircraft in its squadron. The third type of aircraft is what we call as attack aircraft. Now, attack aircrafts can have multiple purposes, multiple uh, missions. For example, it can be used to provide support for friendly ground troops. For example, if suppose an enemy or any particular uh, military is there that is trying to enter into the other country's area or if in the situation of war they are trying to improve their position in that case when the ground troops are moving the required air support so that the uh, uh, artilleries or ammunitions of the enemy do not hit them so in that case the attack aircraft can be used 
uh, that is the main purpose of the attack aircraft. Some are able to carry even conventional or nuclear weapons far behind enemy lines to strike the priority ground target. For example, in India, it is the Tejas aircraft that is the attack aircraft that has been produced by the Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. The next type of aircraft, which is also very, very important in modern day electronics, uh, modern day uh, warfare, where the electronic systems are used uh, on a very larger scale. So these are called as electronic warfare aircrafts, and they are basically a special type of military aircraft, which are equipped for electronic warfare. For example, degrading the effectiveness of enemy radar and radio systems so that there is a complete communication blackout, and thus enemy target can be easily uh, uh, stricken by the attack aircraft. The example of electronic warfare aircrafts are the Gulf Stream 3 or the most powerful one which is believed to be in the present um, in the modern era is Boeing EA-18G Growler which is used extensively by the United States of America. The last aircraft what we are trying to understand about is the interceptor aircraft which is MiG-21 is example of as we have discussed basically when MiG-21 was imported from uh, Soviet Union that time it was imported as an interceptor aircraft. So interceptor aircraft is a type of fighter aircraft that is specifically designed for defensive purposes, for defensive interception role against attacking enemy aircraft, particularly bombers or if any reconnaissance aircraft is flying into the nearby border areas. So that is the role of the interceptor aircraft. Apart from that, you also have a lot of other types of aircrafts are there. For example, we have transportation aircraft, which is used to transport troops or military equipments and all different kind of things. And for example, India is using C. Uh, C-10 as well as C-231J from the United States of America, which it has imported from the USA. Now, if we talk about the India's type of aircrafts, we have discussed in the beginning that MiG-21 is one of the seven type of aircraft being used by Indian Air Forces. So what are these other seven type of aircraft? So first of all, we have Dassault Rafale, which is the most recent procurement from the France. And this is also a multi-role type of aircraft. And the total number of this aircraft in the service right now is 36. Similarly, we have Sukhoi 30, Su 30 from Russia, which is also a multi role aircraft, which is 247 in the number. Then we have Hal Tejas that we have discussed is a type of attack aircraft, which is also 32 in number. Then we have MiG 29, that is 65, again from Russia. Mirage 2000 from France, it has 44 numbers. Then we have Jaguar from United Kingdom, which is 113 number, which is mainly used for ground attack or as a ground attack aircraft. And then we have discussed about the today's topic of discussion, that is the MiG 21 which is a type of interceptor aircraft, but it has been updated, especially the Bison version of MiG-21 has been updated to perform the attack aircraft role as well. And it has a total number of 54. In the future, obviously, as we have discussed, there is a possibility or there is a proposal and plan to replace this MiG-21 aging fleet of the MiG-21 by the Tejas Mark 1 and Mark 1A, both will be produced indigenously by the Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. So these are, these are the seven aircraft that IEF currently uses for its multiple uh, missions. Now, if we talk about the MiG squadron uh, exclusively, what we can see that India has procured over 700 MiG-21 aircraft of different variants since 1963. And the major ones of them is MiG-21 Type 77, MiG-21 Type 76, 96, and then we have the BIS. The latest version of MiG-21, as we have discussed, is the Bison, which is an upgraded aircraft which with advanced missiles, radars, and much better avionics as compared to its predecessor. Over 100 MiG-21s of Indian Air Force has been upgraded to Bison since 2006. Now, MiG-21, though it is a very old aircraft, it has a very old technology, though it has played a very significant role in the military history of India. If you try to understand few important roles that how it has played, or what kind of role it has played. So in the past, it has proved its mettle in several wars fought by India. For example, if you look at the Bangladesh Liberation War of year 1971, the MiG-21s, especially the Type 77 variant of MiG-21, had played a major role in swaying the war's result in India's favor. Similarly, in the earlier war of 1961-1965 Pakistan, as well as later in 1919 Kargil War, the combat jet was along among the main stay of the Indian forces with the Pakistan. And in 2019, the most recent time, the most, uh, what we can say, uh, uh, this incident that has happened with Captain Abhinandan Vartaman, who was the wing commander, he was basically based in Srinagar Number no. 51 Squadron, and he was actually flying MiG-21 Bison when he downed a F-16 aircraft of the Pakistan Air Force. Now, F-16 aircraft is again a attack aircraft, and that is when he downed the F-16 aircraft and was captured in Pakistan and later on released and came back to India as hero. 
So apart from that, if you try to understand that what are the incidences that MiG-21s have faced in the past, how many accidents it has faced in the past. So if you look at the data that has been released by the Ministry of Defense, we can see that almost 500 MiG-21s have crashed in last 60 years that has killed over 170 pilots. In the recent time since 2010, almost 20 MiG-21 aircraft has crashed. And actually, interestingly, MiG-21 was brought to India in 1963. So in the same year when it was inducted in the Indian Air Forces, two of the Soviet era aircraft had crashed in the very first year of induction. Then in recent times, most recent times, in the July month of 2022, a trainer version of fighter aircraft crashed, killing two pilots on board. And then in previous, uh, pre previous year of 2021, five MiG-21 Bison, the latest version of MiG-21s also crashed that has caused the death of three pilots. Now, the reason for crashes is not a single one. There are numerous regions, several regions that ranges from the technical defects in the aircraft, human errors, bird hits, or even spatial disorientation of the pilots in certain circumstances. So this is the reason behind the crashes. So obviously, the most important question that can come into our mind is that why, dis why because of such an abysmal record of crash, the Indian Air Force still is flying the MiG-21 fighter jets. An answer you can understand from the strength of the Indian for Air Forces. If we talk about the sanctioned squadron strength of Indian Air Force, it stands at 42. However, the current squadron strength is just 30. It has not even uh, able to achieve the sanctioned squadron strength of 42. And thus, in such situation when the Indian Air Force is uh, actually having very less number of fighter aircraft as compared to whatever is required, phasing out of the fighter jets would bring down the fighter squadron strength of IAF at dangerously low level. Why we are saying a dangerously low level? Because there is a probability is always there that India, Indian military overall will have or can have to face two prong attack, one from China and one from Pakistan. And in this situation, when we are having a two front war, it will be very, very difficult to fight an effective war, especially in the air with such a low number of the squadron strength. So that is why at least until the MiG-21 can be replaced fully by the other modern variant of aircraft, especially as we discuss light combat aircraft, LCA Tejas squadron, we or Indian Air Force have no other option but to keep flying these MiG-21s. Last year, Air Chief Marshal V.R. Chaudhary has said that IAF even at the current pace of procurement and indigenous production at the most can reach 35 squadron by next decade, even after considering all the acquisitions and the planned phasing out of the existing squadron of the aging fighter jet. To understand this more clearly, if you look at this diagram here, we can see that overall 42 sanction squadrons are there as we have discussed, but only 32 fighter squadrons are currently present with the Indian Air Force. Two is we are considering the recent acquisition of Rafale from the France. So the highest number of squadron is made up of Su-30 MKI fighters, that is 12. Then Jaguar from England, it makes up 6. MiG-21 from Russia make 4. Miraz from France make 3. MiG-29 UPG make 3. LCA, that is indigenous high production, makes 2. And the recent production of Rafale make 2. So currently we have 32. And by the end of this decade, we might be able to reach the 35 squadron with more induction of the HAL aircrafts. So obviously in the future, there is no other option but to phase out the aging MiG-21s uh, MiG and three squadron of MiG-21 Bison aircraft currently are serving in the Indian Air Force, which is the latest version. Of course, each squadron comprises of 16 to 18 craft aside from the two trainer versions. In September last year, they decorated the number 51 squadron and was number plated. The three MiG-21 Bison squadrons are planned to be phased out by December 2025. And as we have discussed, IAF is replacing MiG-21 fighter jets with more capable aircraft such as Sukhoi-30 and indigenous light aircraft that is light combat aircraft LCA Tejas Mark 1 and Mark. So basically what we can say in conclusion about this particular incident and overall MiG-21 fleet of India is that particularly those Air Force officers who have flown this aircraft, they say that aircraft did not have an abysmal safety record as it's seen or as is perceived by the media and the general populace. If you compare to the number of flying hours and the years it has spent in the service, they obviously have on various occasions highlighted the rigorous maintenance checks is also being done. It's not that the uh, aircraft is defective and the uh, Air Force pilots are forced to fly it. Basically, before every mission, before every sortie, rigorous maintenance and checks of every fighter aircraft is undertaken. That also basically increases the probability of successful missions. So that is all about this particular video. I hope you understood about the Indian Air Force squadron indian Air force fighter jets as well as the current situation related to the mix 21s if you like the video please hit the like button share it with your aspirants as well as subscribe to our channel for more social content thank you very much